Jamar has a unique ability from a running back standpoint where he sees things before they develop. I didn't know his name. I just like, man, that dude is quick. Trust me, he will be the sleeper. He will surprise a lot of people and they'll be like, who is that? Jefferson, uh, play running back, and I went to Oregon State University. Jamar's biggest strength is he's got great power in his lower body. He's very, very strong. Um, he's also very dynamic as well as quick, so he's got great turnover, which turnover is great, you know, when you're playing football, but trying to get him to kind of have a more open stride, that's been our work that we've been doing the last two, three months. All right, cool. My training routine going into the, the NFL draft, I mean, it shifts a lot. In college, I always work out, I'll say, two, three hours a day. Definitely changed, and I've been working out at Sports Academy. Uh, started off for four weeks, working out eight hours a day. Uh, it was a struggle at first, but you know, you get used to it. I feel like it's easier now because, you know, it's no school. I'm not doing schoolwork, so all I really have to do is, you know, work out. Overall strategy it's, um, is to try to make him into a track athlete, basically. So take him from doing motions and working as a football player and start opening up and becoming more of a sprinter. One, five, three. But listen, when you look at the prediction, you're right exactly where you need to be. Also, in addition, making sure that there's not injuries. So when our athletes are running properly, you're gonna see a lot less injury and then you're gonna see an increase in their efficiency as they're running and also their speed, which is really what we wanna to try to work on. My role in this is more of a mental, um, emotional role and stuff because it's a long period of time that you're training for so you got to keep them up you got to build them up you got to spend time with them try to put them in the right people's hands that can prepare him for what he needs to do on pro day so we basically break the 40 down into three different phases so his acceleration his transition and then his top speed um, so with the acceleration what he needs to work on is that patience because it's a more slow powerful acceleration instead of a short quick one like you see in most of like all his plays that he's doing um, and then when we get into top end speed, we're trying to get him to get tall and get some good turnover there. In addition, we're trying to learn how to run a 40, how to be efficient in a 5-10-5, how to cut properly, and things that normally those little tiny details that are not addressed in the big picture. You gotta, you can't do that. That's how, exactly how you lose your speed, okay? What really influenced me to start playing for was my parents and my older brother. I seen them running the ball, I used to go to the games, and. I used to tell my dad, like, put me, like, I'll put me in, like, I want to play. My first practice, I think I came out there. I told my dad, like, I'm ready, Dad. <laughs> and I got my helmet on. As soon as I ran to the field, uh, I fell right in the dirt, like the dirt track. I was like, oh my gosh, this helmet's heavy. <laughs> and then after that, I mean, uh, I started to get used to it. And you know, my coach threw me in on the first play at running back. Ever since, I've been loving football. Well, training for the draft, we had specific drills. So we worked on jump cuts, because that's the main drills for the combine. We also worked on just putting your foot in the ground and, and, and creating ground force. He's a great jump cutter, you know what I mean? He's, he's like 210 to 14 pounds, but he doesn't look that big. He runs like a scat back, but he has the power of a power back, if that makes any sense. Like you catch them kick return and go. Just in case, you know, they might go to the run. Yeah, just go. He's a really talented guy, but he's a very humble and teachable guy. That's very important when you want to learn and get on a really special level. You have to be humble and you have to be a sponge and want to learn how to learn. You know, prepping for the draft is psychological examination. So, you know, they want to make sure that um, the kid, if they do decide to draft Jamar, that he can handle that type of pressure of being in the NFL, which it is pressure. You 
know, you, you're playing in a professional league with other grown men. They want to see how you respond to that. You know, we, we have a whole team of people who prep him on how to do interviews, um, help him with um, moving stuff, help him with doing marketing stuff. So, but the, the, the biggest thing we have with Jamar is that he's a client that listens. And so when you have a client that listens and wants that advice, it makes it so much easier. He's a great team player. The energy that he brings out there, his desire to want to be out there, his, you know, he's a funny guy. He's got a great sense of humor. He takes things, construction, very, very well. Um, and also, he's quick, so he's got great turnover, and he's got that power. If they put you in that position to really excel, and I think Jamar's gonna really excel wherever he goes. You know what I mean? I, did, I just think he has that type of personality to be a, a media star, because he's laid back, good smile, and he's a warm person. Everybody likes him when he works out with the people, so I just got big dreams for him. I've been knowing Jamar since his ninth grade in high school, and I coached him in high school, and I've seen him develop over the last eight years into this excellent young man. Um, and again, what you guys are seeing is the football prowess of him, but what I'm seeing is his maturity from when he was just a 14-year-old to where he at now at 20 years old. And I'm so proud of him, and I'm looking forward to representing him, and I'm looking forward to the Really excited about draft day. You know, that's something that's, that's been a dream of mine since I was six years old. I feel like I always had that motivation. Um, you know, growing up uh, in LA, South Central LA, not being financially really stable, that just gave me like the drive, you know, to work even harder. Tell my parents out, my uh, brothers. They did a lot for me, you know, keeping that roof over our heads, me and my brother, and, uh, coming in our house with food every day. So I feel like I gotta pay them back.